Mm. I'll tell you a little story. When I was two years old and I was in kindergarten, um, my mother used to, my mother used to drop us off with my landlady's mother, who was like a grandmother to us. And she would leave us downstairs. And Mama, we used to call her Mama. Mama didn't know to speak any other language besides Yoruba. And every time, you know, we would, my brother and I, we were with her, she would sing to us and she, we would dance. And she would tell us stories. And these stories were told in Yoruba. I didn't understand. I was two years old. But then in school, there was this end of the year thing where children are made to come out and sing nursery rhymes. Everybody's parents were there. And children come out and sing songs. And children were coming out. And the first child, you know, sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Ba 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 Sheep, you know, London Bridge is falling down. And then I come out on stage and I'm telling you I was too. My mother has a picture. And I get there and I start doing Oluwa Kemi Pepe Rempe, Pepe Rempe, Honey Honey. <laughs> shika, shika. My mother said she puts her hand in her head and said, What kind of child is this? And her my teachers were like, Madam, what are you teaching? This girl. And it seemed like there was a problem. It seemed like something was wrong. It seemed like, oh, because she cannot sing the foreign, you know, nursery rhymes, she's not having it right. We, we, you know, we, we need to tell her the right stories. And I am glad because even at that stage, my mother said to leave me alone. It was fine and it was good. And I was raised with Nigerian language and I was raised, you know, with those stories. And then fast forward to sometime later in my life, we would watch a lot of television and there'll be things like Tales by Moonlight, which I hope that many people in this room know about. Yes? Okay, good. And and the world has evolved and storytelling has changed. And in many ways, stories are told not from the oral tradition anymore, which I think is one of the priceless ways to tell stories. Because as a filmmaker and as a storyteller, we take things, we take reality, and we put it on stage, and we put it in a film, and we put it in a script. And many times people come and say, oh, this film is not good enough. And I ask them, what is the reality? What do you understand that the reality is? One of the things that has made Nollywood such a successful industry is the fact that many people watch the Nollywood films and can identify. There's some level of authenticity. There's some level of originality. The films that were made in Nollywood may not have had the best technical you know, size, may not have had the best performances or the best costuming. But as far back as the days of Adia uh, Folayo, Adi Love, and Hubert Agunde, they were telling stories that were authentic and they were real. And the, and the, and the tradition of telling stories orally and verbally, which is something I think is becoming missing in today. And so if there's nothing else that you take away from this talk, it is the fact that we need to preserve the power of telling our own stories. Yes, we're telling the stories on bigger platforms and the world is looking at us. But you see, the place where we need to tell the stories from one person to the other, I am a, I'm, I'm an advocate of mentorship. I believe in sitting with older people and just hearing things. Um, one, of, one of my mentors, Jacques Silva, one of the best things I have learned from her was at a point in my life, in 2011, I was done with my master's. And I was at a point where where, you know, I wanted more. I had studied first degree, second degree. I had started to work. I had won an award. But I knew that there was more. And so I knew that I needed something something more than just what I would watch on television. I am not saying the internet isn't great. I am not saying that technology isn't fantastic. In fact, many people will hear of this talk today because of technology. But then I submitted myself to her and I said, you know what, I want to follow you around. And for like a year, I carried her bag. I followed her around. I sat with her and said, I wasn't her PA. I was the PA to the PA to the PA, you know. And I followed her around, and every time when she was working, I would watch her. And after a take, I remember she would do a take, and then she would have a conversation with me. She would tell me, you know, in this take, I'm doing this so that when we're in post-production, the editor will have some things to choose from. Nobody could have taught me that in a school. Nobody could have helped me understand that. And then I would sit with filmmakers like Kulia Folayo, and he would tell me how his father made a certain film. I would watch Ade Love's films, and I would see the special effects in the those films from that time. And I'm wondering, the, thing, the, 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 the storytelling is just evolving. And sometimes I feel depressed because I wonder, in my time, we're not doing as much, yet we have so much more than these people have. And so when I understand, for example, how Adelov started out and how Ekule Apolayo is working, I can decide how I want to be in the next five years. I can decide how I want stories to be told in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years. I sit here and I say to myself, nobody's going to tell my children about how Osho the bus stop looked before Fashola sanitized it. Who's going to tell them that? 
How are they going to know? I probably will tell them because I am a fan of storytelling. But if we do not realize and see the importance of it, who's going to trap it in a documentary? Who's going to put it in something that we can now use the tools of today to advance the stories of yesterday so that when we know the past we're coming from, we understand where we are, and then we have the power to shape the future that we desire instead of complaining, instead of saying we don't know what is going on, we don't know what to do, oh, this is bad, and just pointing fingers. One of the problems I have with my generation is the sense of entitlement. And I mean that you know, a lot of, I think a lot of us are in the same generation. We come and we say, oh, we know how to do it better. We don't, these people don't know what they're doing. They are old school. They don't understand technology. But I, I dare say that there's something that they know that you and I don't know. There's something that they've seen. There are things they've seen just because they were on the earth, on earth before you. And so if we will just not be so entitled, we will understand a people who don't know where they're coming from cannot understand where they're going to. And so if, if, if today you hear nothing, it is that storytelling is the tool that we need in every, in every genre, in every sphere, in every sector, in every area of influence. You would probably listen to somebody who puts something in a story form first before you listen to somebody who puts something in a lecture form. When you are in a home, when you have a child, when you tell your child stories, those stories will stick faster. Those stories will stick quicker. And as you equip that child with tools to go into the future, that child is able to use those stories. That child is able to use those stories as a point of reference as well and then create that future and then not make the same mistake. You know, people say experience is the best teacher. I say no. Other people's experience is the best teacher. Why do I want to make the same mistake when there are people who have gone before me who I can learn from, who can tell me exactly what happened, who can tell me? And I say I am a product of stories. I am a story child. My middle name is Iton, and I like to say that a lot. Stories surround me. Once there is a story, I'm there because I find that it even makes me a better person. It makes, me, it makes my experiences whole. It definitely adds more to my work, but storytelling, I think, is the tool that we need to move through our past, our present, and our future. Thank you very much.